everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today in this video, I wanted to chat about if you really actually need a full frame camera. Quite actually, do you even need a medium format camera? And trying to demystify a little bit what I use each camera in my kit for. I have three different cameras, both APS-C, medium format, and full frame sensors. And I want to explain to you guys the different use cases that I use for these cameras and how I see each one fitting into my specific workflow. I think this video will be interesting to especially any of you out there who are looking to pick up a new camera, especially one that I might have, or maybe it has a similar sensor. I think this video will demystify a little bit what I use each camera for and the each specific scenario that each camera really does its best in. I'm shooting right now on the Canon R5. Uh, I also here have with me the Fuji GFX 100S, as well as my Fuji X-T5. Now these three cameras are incredible cameras and I really have found a love for all three of them for very different use cases. And hopefully I can explain all that to you guys in this video. So the first camera that I'm going to be talking about today is my Fuji X-T5. Now this is the most recent pickup. This is what I've been making a lot of the recent videos here on the channel about. And this camera is great. I don't have a lot of complaints about it. I want to explain a little bit about what I use this camera for and kind of where I see it fitting into my workflow as a photographer. Now to me, when it comes to resolution and especially client work, I don't really see myself using the X-T5 for big client jobs, especially any sort of advertising or commercial work. Uh, I'm gonna be leaning a lot heavier on my other cameras for that and I'll chat about that in a little bit. Uh, but where I see the X-T5 really kind of shining is in my everyday photography. Uh, I bring this camera pretty much everywhere with me now. It's always kind of swung around my neck. Uh, I have a cool camera strap from Peak Design that I love to use. And it just makes it really simple. Uh, I think when I have a camera of this size and this form factor, that's all I want it to be. Simple, clean, functional. Uh, but the plus side is the image quality on this camera is absolutely incredible. I'll dive a lot more into that in my full review coming in the next couple weeks. But the X-T5, I think, is the perfect balance between function and form. It looks great. The design is great. Um, has a very analog feel to it. And the images I've been able to capture so far have been great. I have very little complaints in terms of the image quality or how stuff looks. Uh, the files are very easy to edit. Uh, and that just makes it a great companion for everyday photography. I might use this stuff as well for some casual portrait sessions here and there. I've definitely brought it on a few with my GFX in tandem to see the difference between the two. Again, I'll talk about this a little more in my full review of the X-T5, but it looks great. It's definitely noticeable uh, when you compare it to medium format files or even full frame. I think the X-T5 is perfect for a little bit more of an elevated approach to just whatever you might want to photograph. Everything from people to places to travels. This camera is a wonderful travel camera and a great companion. I'm actually heading to New York tomorrow for a couple days and the X-T5 is definitely going to be my camera of choice for this trip. It's small, it's lightweight, it's really fun to use. I'm going to be shooting some photos for a hotel. Um, and this camera is great for that. It's just for social use, super easy, simple, and I don't need the massive sensor that the other cameras might have in comparison. Now I am in no way, shape or form saying that you can't shoot big jobs on this camera. I'm just saying that I personally don't. I don't categorize this camera for that kind of stuff. Um, I use my other cameras for that and that's what I'll get into now. Now the next camera in the kit is the Canon R5. This is my full frame camera of choice. It's what I'm filming on right now. And again, I made a video about this recently, but this camera is definitely my workhorse. I use this for a lot of different kinds of things. Everything from this YouTube channel, it films almost every video nowadays, to higher end commercial stuff. I have some really exciting jobs coming up in the next couple of weeks. I can't share too much about, but this camera is going to be the camera of choice for pretty much all of those jobs. And that says a lot about how this camera performs, how it you know kind of fits right into the workflow of really any commercial set. The R5 summed up is very bulletproof. Everything from the amazing lens lineup to the autofocus, the servo settings, uh, being able to shoot motion, action, uh, any sort of fast paced photography, the R5 uh, kills it. There's not really anything else that I've used that really compares. Some of the older Canon models are honestly still really good. The 1DX line is amazing. The 5Ds are great. Canon in general, I think is just a very reliable brand. As I mentioned in my previous video, Everything just works, and that's why I gravitate towards this camera for a lot of my work stuff, the stuff that actually makes me money. Uh, the R5 is just very reliable for that. And also something in general about Canon is just how long the cameras actually last. They have a great shelf life. Uh, my last Canon 1DX that I owned for probably six years, I had almost a million 
photos on the shutter. So a million shutter count before it kind of finally shit the bed. And that camera was a beast. Uh, you can buy used used Canon cameras anywhere on eBay or Facebook Market. And for the most part, you're going to be getting a really reliable camera to use. They just don't really break that often. And when they do, their service is easy. It's just nice and simple. Um, so I think anyone who works a lot as a photographer, weddings, portraits, commercial stuff, advertising, whatever it may be, uh, these cameras are what most people gravitate towards uh, because they're so reliable and easy to use. I've been using Canon all the way starting from the 5D Mark II now into the mirrorless world. Every camera that I've used from them is just a workhorse, plain and simple. It just works great. And that's a huge reason why people use these cameras is because there's not really any fuss about the camera itself. You can just turn it on and start shooting instantly. All in all, the R5, a wonderful choice for any working photographer and a great camera for YouTube stuff as well. Now the third and final camera in my kit is the Fuji GFX 100S. And I've had this camera now for probably a little over a year, but I've used the original GFX 100 as well. So I've had some version of Fuji's medium format camera systems in my bag for several years now through multiple different cameras. And these cameras are incredible. Uh, simply put, it's some of the best image quality that you're gonna be able to get in today's market. It's right up there with the Phase Ones and the Hasselblads of the world. Those two have a little bit bigger sensors overall, but the Fuji GFX, I think, bang for your buck, medium format camera, really hard to beat. You can get into a medium format system for less than 15 grand with two or three lenses. And I know that's a lot of money, uh, but when you're looking at other comparable kits in that kind of stratosphere of cameras there's way more expensive cameras than the fuji kits and the gfx is just a powerhouse as well now the interesting thing is when i choose to use this camera versus the r5 or the xt5 what constitutes the use case for the gfx 100s and i personally think if there's a little bit more of a slower paced environment it doesn't have to be you know stand still against a backdrop uh, i'm just talking you know less action a little bit of time for the camera to buffer uh, this camera is pretty hard to beat in terms of the depth, uh, the image quality, the color science behind it. Uh, the images just really come to life. And every single job that I've shot with this camera so far, which to be fair, hasn't been a ton. Um, I do shoot a lot of my personal work on here. So landscape photography, portraits, any kind of that stuff that you see on my Instagram or website. A lot of that is with the GFX 100S. Uh, if I had the choice, I'll usually gravitate towards the Fuji system. I just like the way it looks, simply put. I like the way that I'm able to shoot. I like the way that the images turn out. It just looks good. And I think at the end of the day, that's all you really need. You don't need to have more reasoning than that for a reason to shoot a camera or to not. I'm actually shooting a really fun job next week with the GFX 100S. And I'll be able to share more of that work hopefully soon, maybe in the coming months. But that's kind of the first bigger job that I've shot with the camera. And I think it's gonna lend itself pretty well because the scenes aren't moving too much. Uh, and the subjects within them uh, aren't moving a ton either. It just lends itself a little better to the system. My one grab about the GFX 100S is the autofocus and low light and also the slowness of the buffer. You can only realistically get around three to five frames a second with this camera. And to be honest, that's pretty incredible considering how big the file sizes are. We're talking 220 to 250 megabytes per photo with this camera. At 102 megapixels, you're just getting massive files to work with, which for me personally, I love. I love being able to crop these images in post and really kind of mess around and see what I can get after I shoot the images. And the GFX really does allow for that. But this camera is definitely not a high paced, fast paced shooting camera, which is usually why I gravitate towards the R5 for a lot of my commercial stuff. Those sets are a lot faster. You need to depend on your camera a lot more. And the Canon camera, as I said, just doesn't really mess up. You can shoot 20 frames a second. It's gonna be great. It tethers perfectly. You never have to worry about that. The camera just works wonderfully. The battery life's amazing. But there's something about the GFX line to me. It's just a little more creative. It feels a little more creative when it's in my hands. I feel like the camera is a better kind of extension of my brain. And I feel like I can get the images that are in my mind a lot easier with that camera than I can with really any other one that I've used. So with all that being said, the three cameras that I do use, I use very regularly. I think a lot of people on YouTube, they use a camera for a couple weeks um, and then they just start blabbing about it as if they've used it for years. The only camera that I'm talking about today that I haven't used a ton is the X-T5, but I'm coming up on a couple months now of owning it and I'm seeing kind of where it fits within my camera kit. Uh, now within these three cameras, I pretty much cover all my bases, everything from everyday photography to portraits to higher end commercial and advertising work to travels and interior stuff. These cameras 
really are amazing at what they do. And it really allows me to be the best photographer that I can be. We really do take for granted nowadays how amazing these cameras are. I think when it comes down to it, the camera is definitely not going to solve your problems of becoming a creative person. Um, the idea has got to come from within. The camera is just a tool at the end of the day, but this is what I use all of my different cameras for. And I'm hoping that this kind of helped you guys out there looking to figure out exactly what you want to purchase and kind of how that fits into your photography workflow. Um, as I said, I use these cameras for many different things, each one being unique in its own right. And I have found that, you know, all these three cameras, they just work really well together in harmony for the kind of stuff that I shoot. Now, all in all, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you were able to learn something from it. If you have any questions, uh, I'm doing my best to get back to everyone in the comments section nowadays. So definitely leave any questions you might have down below regarding any sort of camera system or the ones that I talked about in this video. And before this video wraps up, I don't want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Now you guys know by now, Squarespace is a longtime supporter of this YouTube channel and my creative endeavors. And I have no problem including them on these videos about photography and creativity because I do feel like for me, they've been a backbone of my business for so long now. Now Squarespace, simply put, is just the easiest way to make a website, everything from design choices to layout options it really makes it that simple to not only purchase a domain build a website design stuff throw your images in there use some e-commerce tools to maybe sell some products it doesn't really get much easier than Squarespace that I've found I've been using them pretty much since the start of my career and I've been able to kind of adapt and grow and redesign my website as my photography grows with it which is awesome if you guys want to check out squarespace for yourself there'll be a link down in the description to save 10 percent off your first website or domain purchase thank you so much to squarespace as always for sponsoring this video and thanks to you guys for watching we'll see you in the next one